Hi everybody, I thought I'd do a makeup tutorial today. I have already washed my face with Herbalife Polish and Citrus Cleanser, but I'm going to go over it with the Lacura Healthy Glow Exfoliating Toner. Sometimes it's quite interesting to see how much actually comes off even though you have cleansed your face. I think maybe the toner actually just removes a few more of the dead skin cells. See? Let's do one more pad just to be sure. I do like the way that this toner makes my skin feel. When it dries, it feels my skin feels very firm and with a healthy glow and it feels so clean. I wouldn't use it to get rid of makeup on its own, but certainly after using a facial wash I would definitely use it. Okay, my next step is to use a uh, retinol serum. I'm only going to use three drops of this. And in circular motions, I'm just going to apply that very gently all over my face and neck. Next up is the Herbalife Firming Eye Gel. You have to use such a tiny amount, such a tiny amount, and put it in the under eye region very gently. Pass it on. And last up is the Herbalife Daily Glow Moisturizer. This goes on all over. I love this one. It's got a bit of a sparkle to it. And it makes my skin feel really hydrated. And so smooth and it absorbs lovely. It doesn't make the skin feel tacky or anything. So, and just using some petrissage massage movements under my eye just boosts the circulation. Next up we have Charlotte Tilbury. This is the Wonder Glow Primer. I love this because it's gold. And if it's gold, I, love, I just like anything that's sparkly. I love sparkly stuff. Put this on all over my skin. And it just gives a really nice sheen. If you had a tan and you were on holiday, this is probably as far as I'd go with makeup. using my NARS foundation. It's very light, it's in shade light. I'm going to use the back of my hand as a palette. But because it's too light for me on its own, I'm going to add to it some MAC golden pigment drops and I'm pretty generous with it too using my beauty blender that's been damped down and spraying it 
for effect there. But I've already soaked it in warm water to squeeze, squeeze the moisture out. Having mixed it up on the back of my hand, I'm going to apply and I blend for around about 10 minutes. So I did cut some of this out. When I'm blending, I don't go over my eye area with the foundation, but I do push the product into the skin. Um, my favorite beauty blender is the one from Bounce Cosmetics. I find that it doesn't suck up a lot of the product. Now I'm gonna go in for correction. This is my Lorac palette. I have very red circles around my eyes, and very veiny eyelids and I've also got a lot of burst blood vessels on my face so using a small brush I'm going to take the green and I'm using it on my inner corner Get a bit more up close and personal there, so I could see the little veins on my on my face. Now taking the pink one, I'm going to put this on my actual lid. The Lorac palette, I find it it has quite a thick consistency. Um, it's quite nice actually because I haven't used foundation on my eyelids as a primer for the eyeshadow, I find this look, this works just as well as a primer. This is the W7 contour kit. Now I'm just using the light one out of this. Again, the consistency of the product is quite thick. Um, I'm using it just as a highlighter, but also as a concealer on my under eye area. Okay, using my bourgeois, this is a contour stick. Now initially, the colour scared me because it's very dark and I don't normally use cream contours, but I thought I would give this one a go. So this is the first time I've used this, but I use a little bit. I'll be honest, I was a bit scared putting it on, but I might as well try. I'm just drawing an outline just on my jawline because I want to really strengthen that line and it can make your neck look a bit slimmer. By this point I was thinking, okay, I'm just going to go for it. I'm going to put it where I normally would, just to see what happens.
using my damp beauty blender again I just blended it all in now I didn't drag I didn't smooth I didn't do anything but just blot I just blotted it and I've got to be honest whilst the bourgeois the contour stick took a little bit of really pushing in I actually really loved the result of the contour and they're converted from being too scared of using a cream contour converted I will be using that one for sure really did quite take quite a bit of blending but we got there drag the product a little bit towards down my neck, pushed it in and also dragged it a little bit. Using my Laura Mercier translucent powder. I like to bake and set my under eye area and also to give more of a chiseled look my jawline. Just using, being quite generous with the product and just patting it on. Where I'd already done my highlighter, I'm just re accentuating that. I draw a line just in between where I did my darker contour and the hollow of my cheek and my jawline just to redefine that and give it more of a chiseled look. Whilst I do that, I am going to do my eyeshadows. I'm using the Morph palette, it's the 35P palette. I thought I would go with purples. So initially, selecting a fluffy brush, I'm using just a base matte colour. Start to blend in and uh, using circular motions and not putting it right into the corner of my eye and taking it quite far up. It's just a more of a matte grey purple, if you can see. 
actually goes on a lot darker than it looks in the palette. I love Morph because their pigments are very strong and they don't budge. And that is my Zoeva brush. I forget which one it was, but it's um, a very fluffy brush that I can. So I just like to blend using brushes like that. Okay, so now I'm going to put a colour onto my lid. I want a nice sparkly, sparkly purple. I'm going to go in with this light coloured purple and using a flatter brush. I'll be just popping this on the lid. Using a lighter colour, more of a kind of a just a silvery light. I want to highlight my brow bone. Taking my Head of Beauty palette that has pinks and reds and purples and corals. These these colours are lovely, they're shimmery. I'm just going to do my inner corner just to give it a little bit of a pop. When you have blue eyes, using pinks and purples really make your eyes look very, very blue. Using a buffer brush and going back to my morph palette and taking a darker colour, so it's very, very dark. And I want to start shading the outer corner of my eye. Again, going in and just accentuating that socket line. Dragging the darker colour in slightly, but not too much. Fluffy brush again, just to blend that all through together. You don't want any harsh lines.
again with my Morph palette. I'm going to be using the same colour that I used um, in the outer corners of my eye, the darkest purple. And I'm going to be using that underneath my eye using a very um, flat, small brush that I could be really precise with. And I'm just drawing a line underneath my lower lash line and pushing a little bit onto my top lash line. Also, I'm kind of dragging it together to create a point from the lower lash line to the top lash line to bring the whole eye look together. Just using a fluffy brush again just to just to blend that line out. I like strong colours. I don't like it when they they look like they've literally been painted on. <clears throat> just getting rid of the baking now. That's been on for quite some time. Time to get rid. Using a, my Wonder 2 brush, I'm just taking off the rest of that Laura Mercier translucent powder. Yes, I have no eyebrows, I'm naturally blonde. And I always used to use an eyebrow pencil, but I have found Anastasia Beverly Hills Dip Brow. I use medium brown because I like to have a darker brow. I do much prefer this over pencil these days. Um, I feel like I can be very precise. It comes with the the brush that has the little comb on the end, and I draw in the outline. And whilst my brows tend to stop further than they should, I can carry on drawing with the pomade. And once it's on, it's waterproof. It's, it doesn't budge. It's a brilliant product. I highly recommend it. It makes a huge difference. going in creating the outline and then filling the rest in making my, my brows a little bit longer than they actually are just brushing it into place This is the um, Bourjois Feeling Cheeky palette. It's another contour palette, but it's powder. I'm just going to use the darker one just to re accentuate where I'd already contoured using the cream. I don't need to go too far with this because I find that the cream worked very well. The other two are a blush and a highlight, but I don't find that the blush is particularly pink enough for me. So I put a bit on and then I thought, hmm, I'm going to go back to my trusty favourite. Although I like the sparkle, so I put it everywhere. But for a blusher, um, I went back and sought out my good old faithful NARS. This is in the colour Orgasm. Much loved. Just applying that to the apples of my cheeks. Now, 
lashless. I don't have any lashes at the moment. Normally I have individual lashes. So I'm just using the MAC lashes. These are dramatic lashes. Um, and this is a MAC lash applicator. The tweezers. I'm making sure that you put the glue on. Let the glue set for a little on the, on the lash and go tacky. And then just go in and kind of push it into place where you want it to be. They're a very dramatic, thick lash. You can get thinner ones. They don't have to be quite as thick. I'm just pressing them to my actual lashes because I find that once I've done that, that they hold better and you don't get any corners flicking up throughout the day. Using my MAC lipstick. I forget what colour this is. Ooh. But it's a very pink one. But I find it's very dry. I like the colour, but it's, it's a very, very dry. It's a matte lipstick. So I'm just going to pop that on. A bit too matte at the moment. And I'm going to use a Rimmel brown, it's just like a medium brown lip liner and I'm going to overline my lips a little bit and this makes them look fuller and also using the brown it tones down the fact that the lips are very pink because whilst I like them to be pink, it's just if they're pink in the middle and not too pink everywhere. And that blends in quite nicely, as you see. And then because it was a very, very matte lipstick, I used my NARS lip gloss just to give it a bit of sheen. And so it didn't feel quite so dry. Okay, so I'm just going through and curling my hair, taking fairly large sections, taking my irons on a horizontal rather than a vertical, no, on a vertical rather than a horizontal, sorry, it means that I can get a more beachy wave, so taking bigger sections. I'm dragging it down that way. I use Joyco products to protect my hair. I use the Defy Damage Shampoo and Conditioner. When I get to the top section, I um, take bigger sections because I don't want to look super curly. I just want a bit of wave and texture. Let's find a random straggler. I will curl that bit. Shaking it all through. Joyco Hair Shake. Liquid to powder texturizer. Gorgeous stuff. There's quite a few sprays all over my hair. What I love about this product is that it goes on wet and it kind of dries in and it gives you almost like um, your hair is very fine like mine. It gives it hold but without being sticky. This is the Smashbox Prep and Prime. Just going to spritz that all over my face to hold my makeup. It smells amazing. Popping in some bling earrings. And that's my finished look. Which I will use when I am out of quarantine and I am able to actually go out. I would love feedback from you guys. If you like this, get a thumbs up. If you want to subscribe, that would be fantastic. If you have any suggestions, pop your comments below and enjoy.
take care guys thank you for watching oh my gosh what did i forget highlighter this is actually just a drugstore brand highlighter and i like to use my fingers when i go in and highlight just uh, you don't need the, those brushes or anything just use my fingers dab it on sweep away the excess et voila and now we're done that's better much glowy much more glowy all glammed up and nowhere to go.